Next question is from Jose M279. What are your thoughts on fitness trackers? How do you think they are best used? Yeah, so um, I know you guys are really big, you know, fans of fitness trackers. I didn't use them a whole lot in my career until you know relatively recently. You know, the thing I like about fitness trackers, as I've used them more recently, is just they give you a better idea mm-hmm. of your activity levels. They're not like the super accurate. You know, that, don't look at them like that, but rather look at them as giving you kind of a picture. Um, you know, a wide view of of what's going on. A lot of times, people think differently than than, than reality. You know, yeah. I, I remember uh, when, when Body Bug first came out years ago. This was a, one of the first legit fitness trackers, and you know, we we would mess around with it with clients. And I remember I'd have clients that we would notice that on the days that they worked out, they would actually burn less calories than on the days than like on the weekends, mm-hmm. which sounds kind of crazy. And you'd never guess that. Like I would never have guessed that they would burn more calories on the weekend than they did uh, during the weekend they were working out. But then when we broke it down, because once we saw that data, I said, okay, well, what's going on? Is the machine broken? Mm. What's going on? I would all start asking questions. Okay, I know you train with me Monday for an hour. How well, active are you the whole rest of the day? Yeah, what does your day look yeah. like? Oh, I, oh I, you're I, sitting the whole time. I, dry, I sit at work all day long. Okay, yeah. well, what did you do Saturday? Because Saturday you burned tons of calories. Right. Well, I washed the car mowed the lawn, I went to the mall, went shopping, you know, did I was out on my feet all day till about five or six o'clock at night. And then it became quite obvious to us, oh, it was all this extra activity that you were doing that wasn't even considered a workout, but you were burning a lot of calories. That kind of awareness can help a lot. Yeah, I just look at it as acquiring more metrics, more data. And, and it, it, if if that really drives you into a healthy place, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. If it's, if you're that kind of de- like attention to detail oriented type person where, uh, and I have trained quite a few uh, clients like this, that are into Strava and they're into all these like crazy analytics that like your average person like doesn't keep track of every single rep, uh, you know, that they're doing. Like I used to have somebody that I trained that would actually count all the reps and like w- would tell me at the end, like how much volume he had and all this stuff based off of our workouts and uh, you know, and was driven to to outdo that and like things like that, uh, where it, where it's like a motivator. Uh, but for a coach, I think it's it's helpful to just be able to kind of plot and put things out there, so you actually can see uh, more factors involved in you know that individual. Because what we're trying to do really is to establish like what makes them unique and like where their patterns lie, behaviors, things like that. So if we can like peer into certain behaviors, like. Uh, you do move more on the weekends mm-hmm. and that's an advantage, you know, I want to highlight and show you why and like how to incorporate that through your week. So if it unlocks things like that, where you can understand your behaviors better, I'm all for it. If it detracts you, if you get too obsessed with it, just like, you know, IFYM, like if you're talking about, uh, you know, like tracking all your macros constantly and you're neurotic about it and you, you get stuck there. Like I, I like I, that's where I like I start to to have a problem with it, and I've seen people get like too fixated on the exact data that they're doing to where that's what drives them uh, in all their efforts. So I'm for sure uh, the out of the three of us like the most hardcore about this. Like this is a mandatory thing for me, like for clients, it just is. And the reason why that is is I believe in my experience that almost everybody. Okay, and there's always exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, you know, 90% of clients that I've trained are stuck in that, you know, Sal loves to talk about the the five steps of awareness or whatever that you always talk mm-hmm. about. 90% of everybody is, uh, is truly unaware. Mm-hmm. And the reason why- They're unaware that they're unaware. Exactly, yeah. the, for the first step, right? So they're, they're stuck at the first step. Cognitive <clears throat> dissonance. And, and, and the reason why I, I'm so confident of that is I, I still am. I, mm-hmm. I, there's very few people I've ever trained that have tracked as diligently as I have, taken it to a competitive professional level to where they were, I mean, everything. I was for three years, right? And I still, you'll see, you'll see if you watch our old videos and today, like I'm not wearing mine today, it, but I still utilize it all the time. Like you'll all of a sudden I'll go on a kick where I decide like, you know what, I really want to, you know, take take my fitness up a notch right now or I want to lean out for whatever reason. And before I do that, I strap on my Fitbit again to get an, a gauge and idea of my. And here's what I've found over you know decades of using these tools, is that even as aware as I am, even as much as tracking that I've done, my behavioral changes or my behaviors change all the time. You know that what what we're currently doing right now because of COVID, 
uh, I have different movement patterns and habits right now uh, than just four months ago. Four months ago, um, I made it to the mall at least a couple times in the month. I grocery shopped way more often instead of getting it uh, Instacarted to my house. I was going to the gym where I was having to walk out of the park. So my behaviors are all, and, I, and in that two decades, I've had three or four different career changes where different jobs require me doing different things. Uh, I found out new things about the way I eat, and so my eating behaviors change. So I'm, I, I'm always using it as a way to check back in with myself and, and, and to just confirm what I, what I might believe, right? Oh, I think I'm doing about this right now. Well, let's track and let's see. Now, in and the thing that I know that like Sal and Justin like 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 the least about these tools, and I agree, and I think uh, Dr. Andy Galpin does a good job in his book Unplugged, kind of discussing this, is we we've taken the fitness space like always has taken something really good and valuable, and then we've just you know bastardized it. Now it's like it's this competitive market, and there's tons of money to be made in it, and everybody's arguing over which one is you know three percent more accurate, which one has a better UI, which one offers this feature, which one attack. It's like okay, that's where this can get so nuanced and overkill for most people. Like I utilize the Fitbit li literally just for the I want to see my steps. Mm -hmm. that what it's it's estimating that I'm burning in calories uh, right now and that's really it that's enough to give me a really good idea of my activity level uh, and and allow me to start to build some sort of a structure diet wise what I don't do is I don't get hung up on the actual number I don't go oh oh that says 2700 calories I burn a day therefore I'm going to eat x amount of calories that's not how You're I You're just work. looking at the trends I'm right? just looking at the trends and and because I've done and be, when you've done this enough times I know like for me uh what 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 a low amount of activity is what a high amount of activity is what is kind of an average range what that looks like and so it gives me insight on my current behaviors and my current habits of of exercise my current habits of movement and then it allows me to start to adjust that from there. I don't get hung up on the exact number that the tool is feeding back to me. I'm using it as a gauge, the same way that I use a scale, the same ways that, that I use a body fat percentage. And I think they are incredible at giving people awareness of what they're doing. Because just like you both alluded to is most people, including ourselves who are professionals in this field, overestimate. Yeah. Or, or or underestimate yeah, underestimate calories and overestimate activity. Yes, every time, every time, and mm -hmm. I still do this today. Two two decades of being in this space, I still am always off mm -hmm. a little bit, and so I think they're incredible. Now, if they become something that you are you know so attached to and hung up on that it's it's like dictating. Uh, if you're neurotic about it, it becomes right. dysfunctional. And and, and and Dr. Andy Galpin gets into that, right? Like it's it's kind of like this, right? And and I think in his book he actually uses this analogy. Um, before uh, Tom Toms and uh, uh, what's Garmin's and all the navigation systems came out, I used to pride myself on being the person where once I go a place one time. You never have to tell me directions again. I just had this like photographic memory of remembering things and street names. I just I was really good at that. And this when these got popular was when I was about eighteen to twenty years old. And so once they came on, I thought they were really cool. They got it put into my car. Now fast forward ten years later, I am the worst. Yeah. Well, I can't. I still super reliant on it. I've lived in San Jose for two decades. I still use the damn thing to go to. If I go to a new restaurant, even though I'm super familiar with this whole city, I still use the damn mm -hmm. thing because I become dependent on it so much. So you don't want to become like that. You don't want to become so dependent on these tools that you can't learn to kind of figure these things out for yourself. But also, don't be a fool. They help. I'm not going to go to a new city. And, and go to a, a store I've never been to and not use my tool. Mm -hmm. That's why I bought the damn thing. I'm not going to go go get a map out and prove to myself I can figure this out when I've, when I've got the resources. But I'm also not going to become so dependent on it that I don't open my eyes and pay attention to my surroundings and learn what the hell where the hell I'm going.